Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Board Games in a Minute. Today's video is not going to be a minute long. It's going to be longer than a minute because I am going over my top 10 games of 2020. So I will start out by saying that I have not had a chance to play all of the amazing games that came out in 2020. So maybe I will do what some other content creators do and go back and reevaluate this list at the end of 2021 once I have had a chance to play all of the games that came out in 2020 and I've had a chance to play them multiple times. But for now, this is the list and so why don't we just get started? So first off is number 10. So number 10 is going to be Unmatched Cobble and Fog. By the way, I will say that I'm going off of the years based on Board Game Geek. So um, that's what I am, you know, using to determine whether or not it is a 2020 game. So Unmatched Cobble and Fog uh, is one of the first skirmish games that I actually really enjoyed. Uh, I love the theme of it, I love the characters in this game, Dracula, Sherlock Holmes, the Invisible Man, and Dr. Jekyll and Hyde who is my favorite to play as. Um, I love that each character has their own deck and you have to be careful because if your deck runs out you cannot simply just shuffle your deck again and start drawing from that deck. So you do need to be careful, it can be a bit tense at times and I really enjoy it. So, and it's really a great game to play over video chat. So if you guys haven't checked out Unmatched Cobble and Fog, do check it out. And of course, with the Unmatched box sets, you can mix and match characters. Number nine is going to be Fort. I love deck building games and Fort is one of my favorites. I love the theme, I love the artwork, I absolutely adore the artwork. Kyle Farron's artwork is amazing. And in this deck building game, it is a bit more difficult because when you are playing your cards, you have to put the cards that you did not use from your hand into your yard, which are then available for other players to take. So it does become a bit difficult when you have drawn a hand that is really good and you want to use all the cards, but you can't use all the cards because you're just simply not able to. So it does make it a bit tricky. I have yet to win a game of forts, but I absolutely love Love it and I cannot wait to play it again. Number eight. Number eight is going to be Endangered. So I'm not a huge co-op fan typically, um, as many people might know who know me, but Endangered I really love because I absolutely love the theme of it. I love the you know fact that you are trying to save species from extinction and it felt very true to life. So you're playing as different characters. You could be a philanthropist, you could be a TV you know personality, a famous person. And you know while you are trying to work together to save these species, you are also trying to influence ambassadors. It really did feel like a race against time you know we're trying so hard to protect these species while trying to get enough influence on the ambassadors at the same time and it became even trickier because you cannot place your um, you know you cannot go to a certain location I guess that's what it was called I don't know what they were called unless you have a dice number that is higher than the dice that are already there and you cannot remove your dice until it's your turn again. So that does make the game a bit trickier. Um, my cat has the zoomies right now. You might have heard him in his litter box just a minute ago. So please uh, don't mind my cat and his zoomies in case you can hear that. Number seven. Let me see if I can find seven on the block here. Number seven. Seven is going to be Runica and the Six-Sided Spellbooks. This is a pattern building game. You are students at a school of magic and you are trying to complete runes on your own board. The board has a rotating disc and you are trying to drop in these dice. You are going to take turns drafting the dice that were drawn in that one you know round I guess and you are going to take turns drafting them and putting them into your board to complete these runes and when you complete the runes you will unlock abilities that will help you to complete more and more runes so you know it does have this effect where you know the the people who can complete the runes the earliest will gain more abilities and be able to you know complete runes better than the rest I guess so you know is what I'm trying to say. Um, there are professors whose abilities you can use as well. It is a really great game. I really enjoyed it and you know in terms of pattern building I do think it's one of the trickier ones with the rotating disc which I really loved. So you know this game is a bit harder to find. It is made by a small um, Australian publisher but if you could get your hands on it I highly recommend it. Runica and the Six Sided Spell Books. Also I will mention that a lot of these games I have done one minute overview videos of so if you want more details and you want to see the components, uh, do look at my page and find the videos for them. 
Number six is going to be New York Zoo. So this was the first Uwe Rosenberg game that I actually own in my collection. So anyone who knows me knows that I am against zoos. So in my mind, this is New York Sanctuary. I love that you are trying to go around this board. It is a rondelle system. So you are trying to pick up tiles and you are trying to fill in your own board. You want to be the first person to fill in your board in order to win. So you are trying to fill it with enclosures and uh, attractions and you will get attractions once you have filled in an enclosure with all the animals so you need to be thinking about what is the best thing for you to do on your turn do you want to pick up an animal and have your animals breed and get more animals so that maybe you can pick up some attraction tiles or do you want to just keep on adding more enclosures to your um, zoo however you when you add an enclosure you obviously have to be able to put an animal in it so it is a balance and I feel a bit tense when I play this game because you can only go up to three spaces and then there are tiles that I really want but the other players are not moving a sufficient number of spaces or they have moved too many spaces and have surpassed the space that I need to go to on my turn so I'm always sitting there like you know like come on guys just you know just move this number of spaces so I can get what I need I've played it a number of times. I think I've played it five times now and I have only won once. Number five is going to be Curious Cargo. Now this is a two player game and uh, I love it. It's designed by Ryan Courtney. I hope I got his name right. And you are going basically, your board is basically touching the other person's board and you are trying to load your trucks with cargo and then the trucks are going to move up to the other player's board and they are going to unload the cargo if they are able to, if they have made the right connections. And so it is a bit tricky. It's, you know, got some interesting um, ending game conditions, game end conditions to meet. And the way that the points are scored, like it's different than any other game I've seen. It is very difficult, I would say. It's a game that I will need to play many, many times in order to master. And it is a really thinky, puzzly challenge for me. And I am looking forward to playing it many, many more times with the different boards. So there are many different boards that it comes with that you can try out with varying difficulty levels. So if you have not heard of Curious Cargo and you are looking for a good two player game, I highly recommend that you pick this one up. Number four is going to be Moonrakers. I absolutely love Moonrakers. It is another deck building game. I love Moonrakers because it has a negotiating aspect in it, which makes it so much fun. And it can make the game go on a little bit longer because in the beginning you are all working together to achieve objectives and you know divvy out rewards after achieving the objectives that you want to achieve. However, once it gets closer to game end, you know, people are going to be less willing to negotiate with others and it will get a bit harder. So you really need to work on building up your own ship, your parts and your crew members so that you will not have to rely as much on other players towards the end of the game. It is a really great game. And honestly, I think it has the best production quality of any game I have ever seen. And the artwork is just stunning. So if you haven't checked out Moonrakers, do check out Moonrakers. Number three, three is going to be the search for planet x now this is the only game on this list that i don't have in my collection yet um, but i absolutely love this game i had the chance to play it and i will say it is by far my favorite deduction game now i love the fact that it is not the first person to discover planet x who necessarily wins so you are going to be putting forth theories throughout the game trying to um, gain points that way and you are going through space and the way that the space board kind of rotates and the number of spaces you can move ahead is very interesting. So it is a really good deduction game. Um, unfortunately, I have not made a video for this one since I actually don't have it in my collection, but I would highly recommend you look it up if you enjoy deduction games and check out the search for Planet X. I did discuss it in my top 10 video of top 10 of all time video with the Quackalope guys on their channel if you want to go check it out. Number two is going to be Honey Buzz. I absolutely adore Honey Buzz. This is a worker placement game in which you are trying to, you know, collect nectar and make honey and sell that honey to the marketplace and get money and points. And it is adorable. I absolutely love the theme. I love the artwork. I love the mechanics of this game. And I do think the mechanics and the theme are integrated really well in this game. I love how the bee can go foraging in the um, field for nectar. 
And I love the fact that when you place a tile in your own beehive and when you've completed that hexagon, you then unlock the actions around it. I don't know if I've played a worker placement game like that necessarily, where by placing certain things in your own board, you've then activated certain action tiles. So I really do love that and I love how thinky it can be. And it can be a quite thinky game. I've played this both with the memory mode and without the memory mode, and I prefer it without the memory aspect. Um, but it is a really great game and I highly recommend you check it out. And number one, I think will not come as a surprise to anyone is Merv. So as someone who has ancestry, uh, Iranian roots, um, um, I absolutely adore the fact that there is finally a game that celebrates that culture and uh, history and civilization and it is a beautiful game it's you know the artwork is done by Ian O'Toole but more than that the game itself is really good so this game is designed by the same designer who designed games like Ragusa and I love the fact that you know there's it seems like there's multiple paths to victory however you know I feel like there's still a lot left for me to explore in this game to see which paths will work together which tracks I really need to focus on to try and get those points because when I played it I only focused on you know um, mostly the mosque track and the library and then the um, palace and I did not do very well whereas my opponents Jan and Jesse did much better than me but I absolutely love this game. I love that it's kind of like a combination of Coimbra and Five Tribes, and I cannot wait to play it more and more to see, you know, whether I can improve in my strategy. So that is number one, and I think I've went through this list really fast, um, you know, typical to my style. And I, again, will try to slow down, but if you have any questions about any of these games, leave a comment in the comment section below and feel free to ask and tell me what your top 10 of 2020 games are because I would like to know and if there are any games on your list that I haven't played yet, then I would like to play them. So until next time, bye!